We are now moving into one of the most rewarding sections of maths, and that's the section of trigonometry. It's something that we started in grade 10, we built on it in grade 11, and now we're going to add some more knowledge to our trigonometry foundation. It's also one of the biggest chunks of your paper two exam. So it's very important to have a good foundation. Okay, there are formulas on your formula sheet, but not everything is given. So let's take a moment to just recap everything that you should know before tackling grade 12 trigonometry. The first thing is that trigonometry finds its roots in triangles, specifically right angle triangles uh, was where we started with trig. In every right angle triangle, we saw that there was a hypotenuse and then we would refer to a reference angle and we'd say there would be a, a, a side next to it, the adjacent side, and a side opposite to it. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan opposite over adjacent. And then what we did was we would take this knowledge onto the Cartesian plane. So when we pop a right angle triangle onto the Cartesian plane, then we can translate opposite adjacent and hypotenuse into x coordinates, y coordinates, and radial lengths. Okay, remember it came from the foundation of a circle. We could actually draw a radius at any given time and it would have a specific length. Okay, so on the Cartesian plane, sine theta is equal to y over r, cos theta is equal to x over r, and tan theta is equal to y over x. And then what we did was we branched out into all four quadrants. And that was where we encountered the cast rule. So in the cast rule, it just helped us to remember which ratios were positive in which quadrants. So in quadrant one, we saw that all ratios were positive. That's what the A represents. In quadrant two, sine is positive, which means that tan and cos are negative. In quadrant three, tan is positive, which means that sine and cos are negative. And in quadrant four, cos is positive, which means that sine and tan are negative. So those were the very beginning foundations of what we learned about trigonometry in grade 10. And then what we started to see was that there were certain values or certain angles that we could set this radial line at, and they would always come to the same answers for sine, cos, or tan. And those are called our special angles. And so special angles are something that we need to memorize because we'll be asked to solve things without the use of a calculator. And then it's super helpful to have it. Okay, there are two ways to do special angles. Either you use this, which uh, many teachers affectionately call the fan diagram, or you can use special angle triangles. This is my method of choice, but you are so welcome to use whichever method you are more comfortable with. What is important is that you recognize immediately that 30, 45, and 60 degrees are special angles. And then thanks to uh, this diagram and the help of trig graphs, we've actually seen that 0 and 90 are also special angles. Okay, and these apply specifically to these ratios here. So for example, if you needed cos of 45, you would go to the 45 degree line and you take the x coordinate, root 2, over the r value, and the r value here is always 2. So root 2 over 2, solving without a calculator. And then we moved on and we said, okay, well, there are also some things that are fundamentally true about trigonometry, and we call those our fundamental identities. So tan theta is always equal to sine theta over cos theta, and this is a bit of knowledge that really helps us to prove identities or to simplify questions when they are given to us. And the other one that we learned was that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And there are some variations of this. So you can move one of these ratios across. If you move cos across, what you will discover is that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. Also, it's a very helpful um, adaptation to know. And in the same way, if you moved the sine across, then you would see you would be left with cos squared theta, which is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So some very helpful identities to remember. And then we looked at trigonometry on the Cartesian plane in more depth. Okay, so we specifically said we've got four quadrants. 
and each of these quadrants can link back to the x-axis. So we start at 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270 and, 270, and if you move all the way around, you actually end up back at 0 once you've traveled 360 degrees. Now we like to do what is known as reduce an angle. In other words, we like to take an angle that could be anywhere on this Cartesian plane and say, what would it be equal to if we popped it back here into the first quadrant where all the angles are acute? And so that's why we came up with these reduction formulae. Okay, so specifically linking to the x-axis, you can work backwards, quadrant two, a 180 minus quadrant, or you can work forwards, remember trig always works in an anti-clockwise way, 180 plus. And then in a similar way, you link to the zero or the 360 line, you can work backwards, 360 minus, which is also where you will find negative angles if you encounter them. Okay, or you can work forwards, uh, which is not very common, that's why it's grayed out a bit, to a 360 plus, or those would just be acute angles. Okay, what's important to note is that you could actually travel around and around and around. So if, if you were given something like 720 degrees minus something, you could then say, okay, well, it's 360 and another 360. So you could actually then convert that to something. So you are allowed to, at any point in time, add 360 degrees or subtract 360 degrees because essentially you will end up rotating something a full revolution and ending up exactly where you started. Now our goal is always to work from the x-axis but there are two instances where it actually benefits us to work from the y-axis okay or it could even be given to us. So in rare instances they'll use this y-axis as the line and then you will have a 90 plus or a 90 minus ratio. Okay, and those ratios, if you remember back to grade 11, are called co-functions. And we've got two co-functions that we need to know. Sine theta and cos theta are co-functions. So when you come to reducing things, and we will do some examples like that, but basically you need to identify which quadrant you're in and then determine whether your ratio is positive or negative. Okay, and the same thing applies here for co-functions. If you were given a sine of 90 plus something, you would head over here, you'd say in the 90 plus quadrant, which is quadrant two, sine is positive. And then because it is 90, we switch it to its co-function there of cos. So let's take a look at these reductions at work by doing a couple of examples together. So here we are asked to simplify tan squared of 330 degrees minus sine of 120 degrees times tan of 135. Okay, what this, what this question would probably say, which is not written here, but it would probably say without a calculator. Okay, and that would be our first clue that this is probably going to result in those special angles. Okay, so that's always worth reading um, and, and making sure that we answer those questions carefully. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to reduce this because our special angles apply to 30, 45, and 60. These are all very big at the moment. So we're going to use those reduction formula and we're going to see how we can write this a little bit differently. So the first thing to do is just to identify which quadrant we find these values in. So 330 degrees is somewhere here between the 270 and the 360 line. So it's in quadrant four. So I need to rewrite it then as 360 minus something. So that's gonna be the first step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that tan squared and I'm gonna say instead of 330, I'm gonna say 360 degrees minus 30 degrees. So whatever I write here needs to equal that. Then sine of 120, so looking at the Cartesian plane, 0, 90, all the way to 180. 120 is somewhere here in this second quadrant. Okay, so I can then write that as sine, instead of 120, 180 degrees minus how much gives me 120, and the answer is 60. And then that is multiplying by tan of 135. 135 is also there between 90 and 180. 
So that's going to be another 180 minus 45 degrees will give me that 135. Okay, so the, the reason I did that was because now I'm going to be able to reduce these to acute angles. Okay, so just to recap, we said that that 10, the 360 minus was in the fourth quadrant. 180 minus was the second quadrant, and both of these were in the second quadrant. Okay, I'm now going to use the cast rule, which is going to help us to determine whether something is positive or negative. Okay, so tan squared of 30 is my goal here in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, cos is positive, so that means tan and sine are negative. So that's going to be a negative, but it is going to be squared. So let's say minus tan of 30, but then all squared like that so that the minus times the minus will eventually become a positive okay next up we've got sine 180 minus 60 looking at that quadrant 180 minus sine is positive there so we don't have to change anything there we're minusing a positive sign of 60 degrees and then finally tan in that second quadrant sine is positive which means cos and tan are negative so that's then multiplying by a negative tan of 45 degrees. Okay, now it's up to you. You can deal with the signs now or later. I'm going to just tidy up a bit. So I know this minus times itself is going to become a positive. So I'm going to rewrite that then as positive tan. You can say tan squared 30 or tan 30 in brackets squared. It means the same thing. And then I'm going to deal with the fact that it's a minus sign multiplied by a minus tan. So minus times a minus is a plus. So sine of 60 times tan of 45. So as I said, you can deal with the signs now or later. It's nice for me that they are now dealt with. Now I'm going to need those special angles, which are somewhere in my memory. And I always encourage my students that once you start writing, just jot them down. Jot things down like the cast rule, the special angles, so that you can refer to them when you get to the questions that are relevant. Okay, so tan, we should know by now all of these things. Tan is y over x, sine is y over r, and then y over x again. Okay, and we go to those specific degree lines. So 30 degrees, y is 1 over x, root of 3. So I'm now going to substitute... And in the place of 10, I'm going to write 1 over root of 3. And that's squared. Plus sine of 60. On my 60 degree line, sine is y over r. So root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2. Okay, it's really a good habit to get into um, to, to substitute using brackets. And then finally, tan of 45, here's my 45 degree line, tan is y over x. So root 2 over root 2, or if you remember your trig graphs really well, then uh, you'd know that tan of 45 is equal to 1. That's one that we eventually just end up memorizing. Okay, so what do we end up with? We end up with 1 times 1 is 1, over root of 3 times root of 3 is just 3, plus, and then this is root of 3 over 2 times by 1, so it's just root of 3 over 2, and then let's get a common denominator here, because remember they told us no calculators, eh? so times 2, times 3, we are doing all the steps here, so 2 over 6, plus 3 root 3 over 6, is then equal to 2 plus 3 root 3 over 6. There we have our final answer. Using special angles, we reduced this um, expression here. Here's another example. So simplify again. Tan of 180 plus theta, cos of 90 plus theta, plus sine 360 minus theta, times tan 180 minus theta. So in this instance, they've already allocated the quadrants for us. Okay, it's not like with the special angles where we needed to go and decide where does it fit. They've done that part for us. So we can jump straight in and apply the cast rule. Okay, so the 180 plus quadrant, that's down here, quadrant 3. And in that quadrant, tan is positive. So I can reduce this then to a positive tan of theta. Then it's multiplying by cos of 90 plus 
theta. So that's sending off an alarm bell for me. 90 means cove function. So this needs to change uh, and it needs to become a sine, but let's figure out if it's going to be positive or negative. Okay, so we start and we say 90 plus, here's the 90 line, 90 plus is here, quadrant 2. Is cos positive or negative in quadrant 2? Well, according to this, only sine is positive here, so cos is negative. So that then reduces to something that will be negative, and then because it's a cofunction, we switch it from, sine, from cos to sine. Okay, then plus sine of 360 minus. So in the 360 minus, sine is negative because it's just cos positive there. So that's going to be plus a minus sine theta times by, in the 180 minus quadrant, that's over here, quadrant 2, tan is again going to be negative. Loads of negatives in this question. Negative tan theta. Okay, let's deal with our sine. So a plus times a minus is going to give us a minus. And then we've got tan theta sine theta there. And then on this side, we've got a plus times a minus times a minus. So let's deal with this. Minus times a minus is a plus. So overall, we're just going to have a positive there. Sine theta tan theta. Okay. Now, let's have a look at what we are dealing with. Um, we may be tempted to factorize, but have a look at this. These are, in fact, like terms. Tan theta sine theta sine theta, tan theta, we can just rearrange them. We don't even need to show the step, but I'm going to do it. So sine times tan is the same as tan times sine. And then the one is plus and the one is minus. So that just ends up being an answer of zero because if you've got minus one and you plus one, they cancel each other out. Let's look at one last example here. So we've got cos of 540 plus theta tan of minus theta minus 180, and then sine 180 plus theta. So looking at that cost diagram, I've got a whole one thing that I recognize. Okay, these other two things are going to require some effort. Okay, the one thing that I notice is that I've got over here a very big angle. So when we deal with very big angles, then our, our step is to minus 360 degrees. Okay, and the other thing we're dealing with here is we've got a negative angle. And when we deal with negative angles, we plus 360 degrees. Because remember we said earlier, if you add or subtract 360, you just end up rotating one full revolution, which is totally allowed. So let's see if we can get this into a, a form that we understand just by doing that. So we're going to say cos, and then we're going to say 540 minus 360 plus theta times by tan. And then this is the one where we want to plus 360, right? So 360 minus theta minus 180. Okay, underneath, this thing is not going to give us any problems, so let's leave it as is for now. Okay, 540 minus 360 gives us 180, so that becomes cos 180 degrees plus theta. That's something I recognize. That's quadrant 3. Okay, then 10 360 minus th theta is not a like term there. So let's just do 360 and minus 180. So that gives us 180. So times by 10, 180 minus theta. Okay, that's also something I recognize. That's a quadrant 2. And then finally underneath, another quadrant 3. Sine 180 plus theta. Quadrant 3. Okay, let's reduce. Cos in quadrant 3 is negative. Okay, only tan is positive there. So minus cos theta times. Tan in quadrant 2 is negative. Minus tan theta. Okay, the minute you get a negative, please use brackets. Otherwise, you run the risk of dividing this into two terms. Okay, you want them to be timesing, not minusing from each other. Okay, sine in the 180 plus quadrant is also negative. Okay, so minus sine theta. Now, let's see what we can do. I like to sort out the signs. Minus times a minus is a positive, 
And then a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So our overall answer here is going to be negative something. And now let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a cos theta multiplied by a tan theta. So when we get to this step, it's good to use that identity that says tan theta is equal to sine over cos. So what I'm going to do in my numerator, just to make it easy for myself, is I'm going to write cos theta then as a fraction. So cos theta over 1 times by tan, we've said now, is sine over cos. Okay, over that denominator. So I'm not worried about these signs anymore because I've, I've allocated them. We've got 1 over all minus. What I notice now is that in terms of my numerator of the big fraction, there's actually a cos that may cancel there. So what we end up with is nice and neat, an overall minus, sine theta, once, once you multiply that, 1 times sine over 1 times 1. Remember when you cancel, it just equals 1. Sine theta over sine theta, which is actually equal to minus 1.